I've audited over 100 ad accounts last year and the biggest mistake I see people make that tip money down the drain is that they don't set their conversion goals correctly. And so they point the algorithm in the wrong direction and confuse it and they wonder why their campaigns are broken or not working. So I'll just explain do's and don'ts and what you should be tracking, whether or not you're an e-commerce store or you're a service-based business and some exceptions to the rule. But beforehand, if you don't know what a primary and a secondary conversion goal is, a primary is the thing that trains the algorithm, like trains the campaign that you're running. And a secondary does not train the algorithm, but it might be a nice to like track. That's basically what it is. Just in a nutshell, if you are an e-commerce store, you wanna track purchases. So that's the number one goal, right? You wanna make money. So if you can track the purchase event correctly, then that is the only thing really that you should be tracking alongside of bulk orders. So sometimes if you're an e-commerce store in the mining sector or maybe shipping, then bulk orders are super important and you wanna track those as well, but also the purchase events. Now, some optional ones to track, but might be a secondary goal instead, are checkouts and add to carts. Now, the reason I don't recommend setting them to primary is because a lot of people don't have a reason to. So a lot of people just wanna select all of them and set them all as primary, and so they're giving you know, their campaign that they're running four different conversions to track and diluting what the algorithm should be focused on. Make sure there's less confusion involved. So you wanna just give it one or two things to track max and that is it. So in this case, if you've got a specific reason why you want to track add to carts, like maybe you've got a performance max that's like targeting specific people who add to cart and that's your goal, which at the end of the day, you're not, that's not your goal. Your goal is for them to make, mo make money at the end of the day. You're not wanting to get them to come to your website, add to cart and abandon. That's not the type of people you want. But you know, it, it depends on your use case if you've got it for a specific reason. Now, if you're a service-based business, you want to track form submissions or phone calls and that is it. I don't wanna see click to calls, click to emails. I don't want any of this shit here. Right, and, the, and a lot of people do is simply because they don't know how to track it properly. They don't know that there's software out there track these things. And so there's a software out there called What Converts, and What Converts will help you track the form submissions correctly and very easily. And it will help you track the actual phone call and what's happening on the call, who took it, what, what was said, etc. And it can feed that back to Google Ads very accurately and very easily. Okay, so these are the only things that you should track. You should not track newsletter signups unless you've got a very specific reason. You've got a top of funnel campaign, a performance max or something, and you want to get more newsletter signups sign -ups, and that goes through a funnel. If that's not the case and you haven't got a very calculated strategy, take this off your conversion goals, delete it. Same with YouTube subscribers, unless you've got a, a, you know, you're trying to grow your YouTube channel and that's the primary focus of your YouTube ads or your performance max, never set this as a primary or even take it off entirely unless you're trying to grow your YouTube channel and a specific campaign. Page views, a lot of people do page views. I don't know why. Like there are some uh, B2B enterprise that do it for software as a service and they'll do it when someone visits like a demo page and stuff like that. But most of the time I come to these meetings and these marketing meetings and the board and like they don't use them. They don't have a specific reason why they're tracking that. So in the at the end of the day, try to remove this, get rid of this crab and then try to mainly just track form submissions in general, like just mainly form submissions, book demos, someone requesting a quote or a bulk order, try to track it inside of what converts so that you can understand how much money you made per lead and you can feed the algorithm how much that, you know, quote was worth to you, etc. You can do the same in like HubSpot and stuff, but HubSpot can be get pretty pricey when you're taking the attribution seriously. Now, click to calls, I've already explained this. Click to emails is a big thing, especially if you're in an old school industry, again, shipping, mining, government. Shipping, mining, government, usually people scroll down. Like if you're a commodity based business where people buy from you in bulk, then they'll scroll down or find the, the email and then just email you. They won't bother with a form submission. This happens in some industries. And so you can use what converts to track your emails as well. There's a way to do it. Uh, directions, get rid of that crap. Like you don't need it. And often, like I work with a lot of retail, local brick and mortar businesses. This is useless. Most of the time, like directions are crap. You want to make sure that you're getting at least a purchase or an event. The thing is, I don't work with local fish and chip shops. So I, I don't have a lot of experience with that. And so the only recommendation, this has been not very useful to me. That's all I can say. Now, if you do downloads, app installs and things like that, don't like track that, track the in-app purchases. So you can use something like Mixpanel, 
to track your in um, app purchases so you can understand how much money you're making from your ads instead of just guessing from the actual app installs and things like that unless you've got data right that suggests that out of every three app installs you make x amount of money that's a different story if that is you then maybe you want to track these in separate campaigns and that applies to you right but nine times out of ten most businesses just need to track these and delete everything else so going through all the conversion actions getting rid of all the stuff like this one here it's a double count you can see google shopping app purchase and purchase just select one get rid of this ga4 one and just stick with this one and then you were like oh well there's a discrepancy with the numbers it's because either the ga4 is counting it wrong or this one's counting it wrong it's only a tiny discrepancy i wouldn't worry about it i'd still just delete one so you're not double counting and then fix it afterwards, right? Same with here, like you've got an app from Shopify that's tracking this and you've got this one here. Both of them are secondary, but there's no point double counting. I would d delete this one. When you're going through all the goals, you might see some padlocks here. Padlocks are, you can't really delete them. They're Google hosted a lot of the time. So you, you just have to leave them, right? If you can't delete them, you can't delete them. That's okay. So most of the time they're coming from Google Business Profile and Google Maps and things like that. So it, it's okay to kind of leave that. Um, but when you're actually setting up your conversion actions, where did I have it? Oh, it was just here. So click on the cog button. When you're ready to kind of track a certain campaign, you might say that this is a YouTube campaign. This is a, you know, you want to get more lead forms and phone calls. And this one was something else. Then basically, let's say that this was a YouTube campaign, you go into your conversion goals, you then don't use the account defaults, you instead go campaign specific, you choose like the YouTube goal wherever it is and click save and you're good to go. Um, whereas if this next one over here was just trying to, you know, track forms and phone calls, then you just go over to here first, you choose the actual phone calls. So you could do phone call leads, which would come from extensions or, or call ads. So you might select that, but you also might select this one and you might be like, oh, well, what is website? Well, you just have to go back into here in the contact area, see where it says websites. So this says website here. So that's coming from there. And the call from ads is there. So that's the WC and WC here, which stands for what converts. And you might just select those two. So you might go those and they're the only things that you select and save. This is an e-com store, so this wouldn't apply to this, but I'm just trying to demonstrate to you this is kind of how you would set these up, right? So those are kind of a little bit of the do's and don'ts when you're trying to separate your conversion goals. And the last thing I'll finally say is a lot of people get a lot very excited or disappointed based on what they see here. And so you might see, oh, 27, we got 27 sales and we only made $27, so a dollar each. How does that make sense? Our ticket price is a grand each. We should make $2,700, whatever it is. Um, and so what you need to do is just segment them. And so you click on segment, you then click on conversions, you click on conversion action, and you can see what these really are. It's a page view and an app view. So I would get rid of this. Like this is just distorting the view and it gets you excited over nothing. And then like you might blame the marketing team here and say, hey, you got 27 conversions, or you blame the sales team even, which is even worse. And then, well, it's not true. Like these aren't actually good quality leads or anything close to it, right? Same here, you can see that these are muddying. So we've got double counts here, double or triple counts here. No, you got a double count there. So you got three here and you got six there. And so you would have to understand which one well, like where are these coming from? Is the purchase event coming from the Shopify store? And this is coming from an app that is double counting inside of Shopify? Like you have to have a look at it. So that's really all I can say in uh, for that. Now you've got different situations where you've got inactive here. And so you would have to just go back in time and let's say 120 days before you decide to delete something and see that it still hasn't worked. And then, you know, by that point, you might delete this and it's no longer a goal of yours and no longer a conversion. Same with this one. Like, there's no point having that. You'd have to replace this with what converts. So this one here, or unless they haven't got any leads recently, you would delete this one here. No point having it. You delete this one here unless they've got a future goal to grow their YouTube subscribers. And if they do, you can re-add it later. So these are really the one-on-ones, the basics of setting your conversion goals. So you're making more money from your Google ads. And if you don't follow these rules of keeping it simple, getting rid of all the fluff, then you're gonna confuse yourself, get excited over high conversion counts. You're gonna confuse the algorithm and you're not gonna make money or at least as much money as you want to. I hope that helps. If you've got any questions, leave them below, more than happy to answer them. And I'll see you in the next video.